Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Wednesday night doctrine study here at Beverly Hills Baptist. If you're our guest, we thank you for tuning in. If you would like a copy of tonight's study, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to get a copy of tonight's study. Tonight we are in Bible Doctrine Part 50. It's right, 50 studies in uh, into Chapter 5, which is uh, the Doctrine of Soteriology. Now tonight we're going to take a look at the Doctrine of Sanctification. Now before we get into sanctification, I want to first break down what does it mean to be sanctified. To sanctify means to be set apart for holy use. Now God has set us, his children, apart for the purpose of sanctification. And that is to help us uh, and to lead us and guide us into holiness, not impurity. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, But God has not called us to impurity, but to sanctification. Now, the English Standard Version translates that word sanctification as to holiness. But what it means is to be set apart for holy use. Now, sanctification, as it follows justification, is the process by which the Holy Spirit makes us more Christ-like in all that we do, all that we think, and all that we desire. True sanctification is impossible apart from the atoning work of Christ on the cross because only after our sins are forgiven can we begin to lead a holy life. And so what we must understand is in when Christ died on the cross for us, we were made justified in a legal sense uh, we were made righteous, and then the process of sanctification begins. Sanctification begins when one makes a profession of faith and is a new believer in Christ and carries out throughout their entire life until the day they die in physical death and are born into a new life in heaven uh, or cross into the spiritual life. So sanctification uh, begins and goes throughout all of the believer's life. Now, I want to take a look at sanctification a little more in detail. Now, according to the Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 35, uh, sanctification is the work of God's free grace. This is the work of God doing it solely on his own, whereby we are renewed in the whole man after the image of God and are enabled more and more to die into sin and live into righteousness. So according to the Westminster uh, Shorter Catechism, we understand that the whole man, uh, the believer in Christ, the whole man or woman or child, the whole person is renewed in Christ after the image of God and are enabled to die more and more to sin, uh, are able to resist sin more and to live more into righteousness. It is a continual change by the work of God in us, freeing us from sinful habits and forming us uh, Christ-like affections, dispositions, and virtues. And so it means that we turn away from sin. We are uh, less apt to sin and to be more into Christ-like and to uh, more Christ-like uh, imaging, uh, such as the affections of Christ, the dispositions of virtues. Uh, when we enter into sanctification, as we grow spiritually as Christians, we grow morally. Uh, we start to see things that uh, were once in our sinful past, we begin to see that those things aren't as appealing as they used to be. And as Christians, we begin to abhor those things. Now, it does not mean that sin is instantly eradicated, but it uh, is also more of a counteraction in which sin is merely restrained or repressed without being progressively destroyed. Sanctification is a real transformation, not just the appearance of one. So when we... Uh, become sanctified and we begin the process of sanctification as we are set apart for holiness. Uh, we aren't instantly uh, eradicating sin in our life. We still have sin natures, but the more we grow Christ-like, the less appealing sin appeals to us. And real transformation takes place, not just an outward appearance on one. The basic meaning of sanctify again is to set apart to God for his use but God works in those whom he claims as his own to conform them to the image of the Son. This is seen in Romans chapter 8, as Paul explains. Uh, the moral renovation in which we are increasingly changed from what we once were flows from the agency of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And so it is the indwelling Holy Spirit that helps us to change that. It helps uh, us to be more sanctified. The working of God within us, which is the Holy Spirit, is the catalyst for which we begin that change to be more Christ-like. Scripture for supporting this is Romans 8, 13, 12, 1, 
uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 11, 6, 19, 6, 20, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, uh, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, Hebrews 13, 20, 10, uh, and Hebrews 13, 20, uh, 21. Now, God calls his children to holiness, and he graciously gives what he commands to them. This, again, is seen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And so as the Holy Spirit works in us and through us and around us, it helps us to become more Christ-like, making the appearance of sin uh, more and more uh, less desirable and more desired to be Christ-like. Regeneration, as we have discussed before, is the new birth. And so as we become believers, as we make a profession of faith, we are immediately regenerated into new birth. We are justified through justification by the blood of Christ, and then sanctification is growth. So regeneration is birth, but sanctification is growth. In regeneration, God implants desires that were not there before. Uh, a desire for God, for holiness, for glorifying God's name in the world, a desire to pray, to worship, desire to love, and to bring benefit to others. In sanctification, the Holy Spirit works in you both to will and to work, according to God's purpose, enabling his people to fulfill their new godly desires. And this is found in Philippians 2.12. Uh, Christians become increasingly Christ-like as the moral uh, profile of Jesus is progressively formed within us. And so we become more Christ-like as we uh, follow and take pursuit after Christ as the Spirit works in us. Regeneration is a momentary act. Regeneration is uh, in within that moment. Regeneration takes place, bringing a person from spiritual death to spiritual life. It is exclusively God's work. Sanctification, however, uh, again, as we have explained, is an ongoing process, dependent on God's continual action in the believer and consistence of the believer's continuous struggle against sin. Now, God's method of sanctification is neither active, which is his self-reliant activity, or apathy, God's uh, reliant passivity, but is human effort depending on God. Now, let me explain to that. The, the way God works this method of sanctification is the Holy Spirit working in us, but also our human effort relying on God and depending on God. Knowing that without Christ enabling us, we cannot do good works. Uh, but also that he is ready to strengthen us for all that we have to do. And that is, we abide in Christ, uh, in Christ asking for his help constantly, and we receive it. So as we become more Christ-like, we grow to depend on Christ more. As we grow more Christ-like, we grow to depend on the Holy Spirit more. And the same can be said as we grow more Christ-like, we begin to depend on the Father more. The standard to which God works of or sanctifying his saints is direct in his own revealed moral law, expounded and modeled by Christ himself. Christ's love, his humanity, and his patience are supreme standards for Christians. Uh, these examples are set forth in Romans 13, Ephesians 2, uh, Philippians chapter 2, and even 1 Peter chapter 2. And so we look at Christ as our great example. If you want to know how to become more Christ-like, read your Bible. If you want to know how to be more sanctified or to follow more into sanctification, read your Bible. Seek the Father. Pray to the Father. He will reveal these things to you. Believers find within themselves contrary urges. Uh, the Spirit sustains their regeneration desires and purposes, uh, but their fallen uh, instinct, that is the fallen flesh, obstructs our path and drags us back. The conflict of these two is very sharp. Paul says he is unable to do what is right uh, and is unable to restrain himself from doing what is wrong. Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 7, 14 through 25. And he writes within his uh, book, uh, his letter to the Romans, of how he wants to do the right thing, but he can't. And when he doesn't want to do the wrong thing, he still does the wrong thing. So these desires are still within us. We war against our old flesh. This conflict... And frustration will be with Christians as long as they are in the body. As long as we live in our physical forms, we will war against the flesh. Yet by watching and praying against temptation, 
and cultivating opposite virtues, uh, they may, through the Spirit's help, put to death particularly bad habits. Romans 8, 13, Colossians 3, 5. They will experience many particular deliverances and victories in their battle with sin while not being exposed to temptations that are impossible to resist. And so as we live the sanctified life, as we live the life of a believer, we war against this flesh and blood. And the scripture even tells us that we war even against more things than that, against principalities and powers. And as we rage this war within us, this uh, sinful old nature, as we become more Christ-like, uh, then we begin to lose those desires for temptation and have more desires of Christ. But that only comes, that only comes for us seeking that relationship. That's not going to come easy. You're not going to become a believer and begin the process of genuine sanctification and immediately not be tempted to go back to your old lifestyle. Only through developing a relationship with Jesus Christ can you overcome those temptations and eventually coming beyond where you are progressively. There will be setbacks, but there will always be progression so long as you are genuinely seeking God in His Word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we can come and to you to the throne of grace and to worship your name. And Father, as we battle against the struggles in this world, and as we take on this process of being sanctified, to be set apart as holy, and we are uh, facing and going through sanctification, we praise you and thank you that you are leading us to be more Christ-like, uh, personifying the name of Christian as little Christ, and as we work hard. Father, forgive us where we fail you, because we know that we absolutely will. We will fail you, and we will sin against you, and we pray that you would just lead us and give us grace and mercy. Uh, direct us in this sanctification to be more Christ-like and to do your will, to do your honor and your glory. Father God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am very excited to tell you that we are still continuing to meet here at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings for our morning worship service. Uh, if you don't have a church home uh, and you are looking for a church in the Richmond, uh, Rockingham area here in Rockingham, North Carolina, we would love to have you as our guest. Uh, we are still abiding by the uh, rules, uh, wearing masks, uh, providing those, uh, hand sanitizer, and practicing social distancing. Uh, but as the scripture says, there, there's nothing that beats fellowship with one another. And we would love for you to come uh, and join with us. Till then, I pray that the Lord will watch over you, protect you, and keep you safe. God bless.